guys, my name is Sal Velsek and today in this video we are going to look at cross origin resource sharing and I am going to solve this lab of cross solubility with basic origin reflection. So let's get started. So before learning cause we need to know more about the same origin policy. So to explain this thing I have opened three websites in front of me. One is YouTube featuring my channel, another one is Crunchyroll and the third is Google. So for example I am streaming an anime name as One Piece in Crunchyroll or you can just take any example of a movie or any website which I'm using right now. So over here in Crunchyroll I'm just watching this thing and another in another tab YouTube is open. So YouTube actually cannot read the data and cannot know what am I watching in Crunchyroll. So in Crunchyroll YouTube will have no idea like what am I looking at and what am I actually watching and all how much time am I watching what do I like what I don't like so all of this data which is actually going through Crunchyroll like YouTube has no idea about it because there is this SOP policy which is developed or implemented by the browsers that uh, like if I am streaming at one tab or at one website then the other website cannot have any knowledge or anything uh, about what I am watching on this so why is this so? So I'll explain you. For example, in Crunchyroll, I had an account, and the my uh, and if I was on the settings page. Now, since if this SOP policy was not developed, then YouTube will actually be able to read all my settings. Since if there was no SOP policy, then one tab can access the data of another tab, like one website can access the data of another website. So if that was so, then just this YouTube.com will just take all of my settings data and all of my passwords data and such that everything will be so vulnerable right then next time only the attacker will need to just give you a website and that website will just take all the data from all the websites and he will have all the users and all the passwords which you have so that's extremely dangerous right so for that SOP policy is made SOP policy is like if I'm streaming on one website and one thing then the other website will not know what am I doing it cannot see the data it cannot access the data it just cannot do anything with that data it just cannot see it only so this is the SOP policy and it is really really important so now once you know SOP po policy now let's see what is cross origin source sharing so now just I'll just tell you in the future now Google and YouTube are quite trusted right Google trust YouTube and YouTube trust Google right so what if in the future YouTube wants to access the data of Google or vice versa what if Google wants to access data of YouTube then for this to happen it will just say no it's not allowed like one uh, website cannot access the web, uh, data of the other website so how will this happen so this can actually still happen because there is two headers which are like amazing headers which are access control error origin and access control allow credentials if for example if the response has these two headers and over here rather than it's telling malicious website it's if it says youtube dot uh, if it says www.youtube.com then actually speaking google will be able to access youtube and like that so just i'll just explain you again see sop policy is that one website cannot access the other website but what if they wanted to access each other then the response would have to include a header saying access controller origin and the name of the website. So for better understanding what if Crunchyroll want to access YouTube then YouTube will have to bring out a header in the response saying access controller origin HTTPS Crunchyroll. Okay so just for that SOP policy if it's like if the website actually itself wants that the other website to okay fine yeah go to access my data then the response should contain this header okay so this is cause now I'll tell you what is cause misconfiguration so cause misconfiguration happens that for example uh, this is happening over here and just explain you this is just a hypothetical situation doesn't happen really just for example if these two wanted to share data then they would have been the use of this header uh, which I just told you which is this one okay so now cause misconfiguration is where like uh, where example now if there is uh, over here in this place what if I actually use malicious website so rather than it should be a really trusted website right for example only Crunchyroll should be there 
otherwise anyone can access the data of YouTube. So over here, what if I use a malicious website? What if the other response contains a malicious website in this data? So if there is a malicious website, it means that any malicious website can actually access the data of the whole site or that web page actually. So again, I'll explain you with the example of this lab so that you understand it better. So let this lab open. Just a second guys. I guess my Bob intercept is off. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's open. See. So let's first log in with Wiener and Peter. These are the credentials which are given to us. So my account. Username. Password is PTR. Let's log in. Okay. So yep, we have logged inside. Okay, so I'll just uh, set up my Bob Suite settings manual proxy in Bob Suite. I'll keep this as on and I'll refresh the settings page. Okay, and I'll send this request to the repeater. Okay, now it's done. Done. Maybe now I can just turn this off. I don't need this anymore. Okay, see. So this is just a normal page, normal settings page. You can see your API key. And API key is just a sensitive data. Okay, so that's fine. Now, over here, uh, if you can see no origin header, right? Okay, see. Over here, I'm just sending this response and you will get some result. And this result contains sensitive data such as where is it? API key, no? API, yeah, your API key. Where is the value of API key? Okay, it's not here. It's in fetch account details. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll try reloading this again. Just a second, guys. The settings page is itself calling one more page, which is settings details. Yeah, here it is. It is account details over here. This account details gives out the value of the API key which we need. Yep, here is it. Here is the sensitive information. Okay, cool. So we have this page, this place where is, which is account details, which gives us this sensitive information over here which we need. Cool. This is all sensitive, right? Session, API key, username. Okay, this is all sensitive. And for email also, let's do the email also. Okay, so I'll do the email later, fine. So over here, um, see, there is no origin header firstly. And over here, there is no use of those two headers, which I told you, right? See, now, for example, if anyone wants to access this website, it will actually say with an origin header that see my origin is this thing can i access your website so again see i'll just copy this thing over here for example over here i'll just copy this and send this see firstly what is happening is that for example if this website access want to access itself so that's fine right anyone can access it origin means that from where did this request originate and I'm saying that it originated from your own website then it says okay fine access controller or origin everyone from everyone any website who has this thing can access me now but there is a cause misconfiguration that means I have not configured cross properly that means even though rather than this I type evil.com and I send this you will see an evil.com is actually like reflected on the right side or on the response. So that should not happen. If this happens, then evil.com can actually access all of this data. See, again, two websites cannot access each other's data. But for this thing, there you can make an exception if you actually want them to access the each other's data is that you can provide an o origin header you can see over here origin header this is the website which is requesting and this is the website and the website if it allows it will respond like this and if the website doesn't allow then it will show us another it will say no I don't want to allow this I don't want to do this okay 
so this thing is working because there's a cost misconfiguration otherwise if we'll test it on another new website and you'll just add an origin header or your own then you will see there won't be any access control or origin on the response because they don't actually want to allow this thing to happen but now since over this there's a misconfiguration and i'm saying that hello sir i'm evil.com i want to access you and it's saying yeah okay you can access it i'm allowing evil.com to access all of my resources like from one website to another website it's allowed and now all this data can be accessed by the attacker so to do this there is a script which you need to write again and then you need to also deliver it to the victim so the script is this thing this is a javascript so there is use of xml http request so i'll just cat that out yep so xml http request is a built-in browser object that allows to make http request in javascript so using that you can make an http request so this thing is saying var request is allowing you to make a request and that request will open this vulnerable website this vulnerable website is the one which you just saw this is the vulnerable website right and this vulnerable website will open that request with credentials true that means it will get all the credentials it is requesting with credentials and then the whenever the data comes and it is finally loaded it will call this function and all the data will come to us so even if you don't understand this it's okay it's the same script you don't need to just understand it you just need to copy it and paste it just just understand one thing just one change that over here just change this part to the data to the vulnerable website okay so over here also i'll change this part to this website and of course i'll add the slash account details page because that's the data i want so i need to specify the exact location to get this data okay if i just provide like my account then i'll get this data which is not good there's not useless data there's no private information in here so i need to provide exact data with path that is with account details okay cool so let's do this i'll go to cost i'll go to exploit server and since it is a javascript you need to include a script tag before and after okay so start script end script and in between copy all of this okay and I'll just remove this because there is no location to keep now so I'm just keeping it like this right now and in this vulnerable website I'll replace it all of this by the actual vulnerable website slash rather than I don't want it my account I want it account details I'm giving the exact path okay and now I guess I messed up in this location tab because I'm an exploit server so I need to change the location tab actually location tab is where you want the response okay so don't see don't feel like I'm cheating but I'm just looking at the solution for one second yeah it's slash log dot key okay I'll just copy this for right now because I actually want this to be come in my exploit server so that's why I'm just copying this okay otherwise you can actually sp specify your own place where you want this okay you can just put like i wanted in my pc so it will directly send it to my netcat or something cool so okay this is fine now i'll say deliver exploit victim let's see if it works or not okay so i have delivered the exploit so let's see how the access log looks and does the access log give any great data okay it gives us the data of administrator wow. whose api key seems to start with um okay it's percentage 22 okay i guess if the api key starts from here so i have the value of the api key and i'll see if the submit solution is correct or not is it correct yep yep it is solved wow congo 
so just a quick explanation in the last second even if you didn't get whole through all of this anything you didn't get anything I'll just do it in short see add an origin step one add an origin header step two add any website you want step three if you see that any website which you added has been reflected and if you see if there is some sensitive data which is there because if there is no sensitive data you won't get anything your log will look empty your look log will have the HTML response you don't want that right you want sensitive data because you can see username username email API key session again in the email over here you'll see email API key and session see so whatever data we get in response is only coming to us so unless the data is sensitive there is no use to do that so step one add origin header step two see is it being reflected step three check if there is actually incessant data and is it really useful is it like you should do it or not that actually should be step one seeing if the data is useful or not then if it happens then to just write this script you can just copy paste this script and you're done that's it guys so easy peasy so i hope you like this video like and subscribe and i'll see you next time and if you like the explanation i have also explained some of the concepts like csrf attacks and all that stuff so it's a nice explanation so like and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye bye